Good morning. Welcome everyone to our service of Holy Communion this morning as we enter the second week of Lent. Welcome to those in-house, welcome to those watching online. Today Simon will unpack the next chapter in our series on the book of Ruth. We begin as ever with our gathering. Lord, speak to us, that we may hear your word. Move among us, that we may behold your glory. Receive our prayers. Amen. Our opening hymn, Be Thou My Guardian and My Guide. We sit for our prayers in preparation and penitence. And so we pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ says, A new commandment I give you, that you love one another as I have loved you. With that in mind, let us confess to Almighty God our failure to accept his love and to share it with others. We have not held out the word of life in a dark and twisted world. Lord, have mercy. Lord, we have failed to share our bread with the hungry. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We have closed our hearts to the love of God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May God, who has loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive us our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The collect for this second Sunday of Lent. Almighty God, you show to those who are in error the light of your truth, that they may return to the way of righteousness. Grant to all those who are admitted into the fellowship of Christ's religion, that they may reject those things which are contrary to their profession, 
and follow all such things as are agreeable to the same. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our reading from Ruth. first reading is Ruth 2. Now Naomi had a relative on her husband's side, a man of standing from the clan of Elimelech, whose name was Boaz. And Ruth, the Moabite, said to Naomi, let me go to the fields and pick up the leftover grain behind anyone who, in whose eyes I find favour. Naomi said to her, go ahead, my daughter. So she went out, entered a field and began to glean behind the harvesters. As it turned out, she was working in a field belonging to Boaz, who was from the clan of Elimelech. Just then, Boaz arrived from Bethlehem and greeted the harvesters. The Lord be with you. The Lord bless you, they answered. Boaz asked the overseer of his harvesters, who does that young woman belong to? The overseer replied, she is the Moabite who came back from Moab with Naomi. She said, please let me glean and gather among the sheaves behind the harvesters. She came into the field and has remained here from morning till now, except for a short rest in the shelter. So Boaz said to Ruth, my daughter, listen to me. Don't go and glean in another field and don't go away from here. Stay here with the women who work for me. Watch the field where the men are harvesting and follow along after the women. I have told the men not to lay a hand on you. And whenever you are thirsty, go and get a drink from the water jars the men have filled. At this, she bowed down with her face to the ground. She asked him, why have I found such favour in your eyes that you notice me, a foreigner? Boaz replied, I've been told all about what you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband, how you left your father and mother and your homeland and came to live with a people you did not know before. May the Lord repay you for what you have done. May you be richly rewarded by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. May I continue to find favour in your eyes, my Lord, she said. You have put me at ease by speaking kindly to your servant, though I do not have the standing of one of your servants. At mealtime, Boaz said to her, come over here, have some bread and dip it in the wine vinegar. When she sat down with the harvesters, he offered her some roasted grain. She ate all she wanted and had some left over. As she got up to glean, Boaz gave orders to his men, let her gather among the sheaves and don't reprimand her. Even pull out some stalks for her from the bundles and leave them for her to pick up and don't rebuke her. So Ruth gleaned in the field until evening. Then she threshed the barley she had gathered and it amounted to about an ephah. She carried it back to town, and her mother-in-law saw how much she had gathered. Ruth also brought out and gave her what she had left over after she had eaten enough. Her mother-in-law asked her, where did you glean today? Where did you work? Blessed be the man who took notice of you. Then Ruth told her mother-in-law about the one whose place she had been working. The name of the man I worked with today is Boaz, she said. The Lord bless him, Naomi said to her daughter-in-law. He has not stopped showing his kindness to the living and the dead. She added, that man is our close relative. He is one of our guardian redeemers. Then Ruth, the Moabite, said, he even said to me, stay with my workers until they finished harvesting all my grain. Naomi said to Ruth, her daughter-in-law, it will be good for you, my daughter, to go with the women who work for him, because in someone else's field, you might be harmed. So Ruth stayed close to the women of, the Bo of, of Boaz to glean until the barley and wheat harvest were finished, and she lived with her mother-in-law. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we prepare for our gospel reading, we sing, Forgive our sins as we forgive.
Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Our gospel reading is Mark 8, 31 to 38. He then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. He spoke plainly about this and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when Jesus turned and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter. Get behind me, Satan, he said. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Brother Christ. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Just in case you're a little bit worried, I do have a new kind of mic on today. I call it Britney Spears' mic because she used to sing and dance with one. I can assure you that there will be no singing and dancing today from myself, but um, we're just testing out some new equipment, so fear not. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for gathering us to your table and your home today. <coughs> Lord, we want a fresh revelation of belonging to you and your church and the family that is within it. So speak through me, I pray, in your name and to your glory. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Please be seated. The theme given to chapter 2, Ruth chapter 2 today, is the providence of God. The word providence means the protective care, if we can move one forward, the protective care of God, if you want to move one forward again, the protective care of God, whereas a lengthier description is it's God's caring provision for his people as he guides them in their journey of faith through life, accomplishing his purposes in them. Who wants to have purpose in their lives? Yeah? And who wants to actually accomplish those purposes? We all do, right? The whole point of Ruth chapter 2 is that we see the providence of God in the actions of Boaz, who is probably the nephew of Naomi's late husband, Elimelech. Through his kindness, Boaz ushered in the day of redemption for Naomi and Ruth, and their lives were transformed. My plan today is to briefly run through chapter 2 to show how the kindness of Boaz points to the providence of God in our lives. Then I'm going to dive a little deeper into just one verse that's caught my attention this week as I've been studying this passage. So Father, teach us your ways as we look at this next season of Ruth's life. Let's start with chapter 2 verse 4, which says... Boaz greeted the harvesters, saying, The Lord be with you. And they answered, The Lord bless you. Boaz brought honour to God in all he did. He knew that his wealth and ability to provide for others was not his own doing, but God's. Jesus did the same. He honoured God and pointed people to him by glorifying him for his provision and protection for us all. And as followers of Jesus, we should be doing the same. Let's break on to verse 5 then, where Boaz asked, who does this young woman belong to? 
Boaz noticed Ruth, who had approached his site manager with humility. And God sees those on the margins and those in need. He seeks them out like the shepherd who left the 99 sheep to find the one. God notices us and he knows our situation. So we also need to be watchful for those in the margins of our communities and help them to belong within them. Let's move on to verse 8. <clears throat> Boaz said to Ruth, My daughter, listen to me. Don't go and glean in another field and don't go away from me, away from here. You see, by calling Ruth my daughter, Boaz was accepting this foreign Moabite woman as his own. Even though the nation of Moab was a fierce enemy of Israel throughout most of the Old Testament. In the same way, God welcomes us and offers us a relationship with him. He accepts us sinners as sons and daughters and brings us into his inheritance, becoming co-heirs with Christ. What about verse 9? It says, I have told the men not to lay a hand on you, and whenever you are thirsty, go and get a drink from the water jars. Boaz recognised Ruth's vulnerability of being the new woman on the block, who didn't know the dangers and the allowances. So he called for her protection and gave her guidance. Likewise, God provides the needed protection and provision for us to flourish in our work and life. So are there people you know who need some protection and provision at the moment? How might you support them? And then verse 14, as meal time, at the meal time, Boaz said to her, come over here, have some bread and dip it in the wine vinegar and have some roasted grain. Boaz calls Ruth into the place of honour to be with him at the meal table. In the same way, God is personal, not distant with us. We receive a personal invitation to do life with Jesus and all that he offers. He calls us to come to him, to eat of his bread and drink of his wine, as we will do this morning, in remembrance that he died to save us. Is there anyone you could share a meal with this week to encourage them and bless them? Then verses 15 to 7 says, Boaz gave orders to his men, pull out some stalks from, for her from the bundles and leave them for her to pick up. Then she threshed the barley she had gathered, and it amounted to about an ephah. Boaz here goes above and beyond his, in his provision, not just to Ruth, but to Naomi as well now. As an ephah is 300 kilograms of weight, so she collected about half a month's wages that one day. It was immeasurably more than all she could have imagined. Our God is a God of abundance and extravagance. Our God is a God who delights not just in the provision, but in the generosity of the overflow as we give out to others from what God has already given to us. <clears throat> Let's go on to verse 20. Naomi said to her daughter-in-law, the Lord bless him as he has not stopped showing his kindness to the living and the dead. That man, she said, is not only our close relative, he is one of our guardian redeemers. Boaz embodies features of God's own character, particularly his kindness. This kindness is clearly visible by as Boaz goes well beyond any legal requirements in his generosity to Ruth, even to the point of including Naomi and Ruth's names in the inheritance plan. And much like Boaz was the guardian redeemer in the clan of Limanek, Jesus is the guardian redeemer in his worldwide church family. He has taken on the burden of our sin and state and redeemed us to stand faultless before the throne of God. How could you express kindness and generosity this week? And finally, verse 23 says, Ruth stayed close to the women of Boaz 
to glean until the barley and wheat harvests were finished. By Boaz allowing Ruth to work through the season she had come, she had time, sorry, by Boaz allowing Ruth to work through the season meant she had time to become part of the, Beth, the community in Bethlehem. Though they were related by marriage and not by blood, Naomi and Ruth were fully accepted. In the same way, God places us into a church so we can grow into the person God wants us to be. Are there people in your communities who you could come alongside and disciple? So we can see very clearly all that this passage is telling us about the providence of God and our relationship with Jesus as one who welcomes, redeems, protects, provides and blesses. What happened to Ruth on that redeeming day is a picture of what happens to all who come to Christ. He lifts us up, he cares for us, he provides for us. His eyes are upon us right now and everything in your life and my life is leading you and me to the place of glory and fulfilment and redemption in him. So that's the overview of the passage. So let me quickly dig into one verse that I've been drawn to this week as I've been preparing. And it's verse 5. It says, who does that young woman belong to? Now who enjoys watching a good David Attenborough episode? Who uncovers parts of our incredible world that we live in, both beautiful and shocking? <clears throat> What often strikes me is how harsh the natural world can be. Many newborn animals have to fight for their survival on their own. There's no care or support from parents. It's just survival of the fittest or the luckiest. But it's different for humanity. As God breathed his life, his own life, into us, making us the only created ones who are made in his image. So we are born to be in a caring relationship with others from our first breath onwards. We are designed and wired that way by God to support each other and to belong to something. So Boaz asked, who does this woman belong to? But I'm asking, who do you belong to? We're seeing this very thing coming to life at the Mowbray housing development up the road where people are responding posit positively to our work of building community there. There's a photo here of <coughs> the recent gathering and social event of the residents uh, that we had up at Bowhunt. It's, and it's these positive comments are not just coming from the residents but from the developers as well. <coughs> One of the Senior Carla staff, who now lives on site, told me the other day that what we're doing on Mowbray is not being done on any other site that Legal and General or Carla are working on. So they're definitely starting to see the value that we are bringing in building community. You might see on the, the banner there, our mission statement we wrote a year ago, creating community for all to flourish. And it's starting to become, to become a reality up there, as it's all about belonging. As people of God's image, he wants us to belong to something, because God himself belongs to something. The Trinity of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So belonging is not about connections and social media follow followers. It's about being in a place where you not only survive, but you thrive. So who do you belong to? Humans are drawn to belong to a group, whether it's good or bad. But God wants us to be part of a welcoming and loving community where we can grow, a place where we can wrestle healthily with scripture as we seek to understand it accurately and apply it appropriately. So he gave us his church as a place where we can belong where we can be safe, where we can relax, where we can love and enjoy life. So how can we, St Mark's Church, how can we be a place where people belong? 
from people, how can we grow in our own sense of longing at St Mark's? Some here will have huge sense of belonging already. This is Elsie. <clears throat> I met her at our BCP service on Wednesday this week. She's 85 years old, 86 years old, sorry. And she's been a member of St. Mark's Church for, any guesses? 75 years. A member of St. Mark's Church for 75 years. She belongs. But it's not just about the number of years someone has attended St. Mark's. There will be some who have worshipped here quietly for many years and still feel on the edge of things. Or maybe you're missing Richard and you're finding it hard to connect with our church without him. And of course there will be others who have only joined us recently, so the sense of belonging is only just starting to develop. Wherever you're at, I think there are four things from today's passage that we can do to help us grow in our sense of belonging here at St Mark's. Connect, serve, pray and give. And I'm going to just very briefly, before I close, very brief, <coughs> briefly touch on each of these to help us shape today's response. The first, connect. It starts with connections. Burroughs saw Ruth and invested his time and attention into her. How can we invest into making new connections? You could join a weekly home group or a monthly prayer triplet. You could sign up to the church weekend away at Ashburnham Place. And if you've joined St Mark's in the last 18 months, you could sign up for the newcomers Cheese and Biscuits evening on Tuesday the 12th of March. But let's not limit this to church activities. Bring it into your daily lives. Burroughs invited Ruth to his meal table. So who could you invite back to your house today for a meal? Or if you need more time to prepare during the week or next Sunday? Secondly, serve. Ruth humbly approached the site, the site manager to ask if she could serve in Burroughs' field. And she put her head down and she got on with the work. How could you serve at St Mark's? Now this is not a stewardship Sunday, but it's an opportunity to belong. And the single best way to do that is to serve. We have 61 different ministry areas running through this church. Could you help to keep them going and keep them growing? Maybe there's a different area that's in need that you could serve in instead of the one where you have been serving for many years. Thirdly, pray. The first two points, connect and serve, are very practical, but this one is spiritual, and it's needed so much because there's a spiritual battle going on in every church. After feeling knocked down by her circumstances in chapter 1, Naomi shifted her prayers and lament to the praise in giving thanks for what God had done. So we don't. So why don't we begin and end our prayers with thanksgiving? Allow that thankfulness to impact our prayer life, our walk with God, and our mental health. It's a huge year for our church with Richard no longer with us and the lengthy process of finding our next vicar underway, we must be praying as a church together. You could join our fortnightly prayer evening Wellspring, which is on tomorrow evening, and you could ask the office to add you to the church prayer email distribution, so we're praying together for the life of our church and community. So connect, serve, pray, and give. Boaz gave generously on, of, of his land and produce to bless those in the community. How is your giving? Is it generous? Do you need to review it? If you're new and you haven't started giving yet, maybe now is a good time. We're investing into two more staff this year for our kids' work and our youth work to further our work in St Mark's and the community around us. But we're having to use our reserves. In fact, based on our current income, we're forecasting a deficit for the next four years, at least. We can cover that gap with our reserves, 
and use that all up. But that's obviously not a healthy place to be. So we need to see an increase in our monthly giving. Can you help? But do note, this is as much about personal discipleship as it is about practical finances. Luke, 2, Luke 12, verse 34 says, For where your treasure is, your money, there your heart will be also. Or to put it another way, where you invest, you belong. However much or little it might be, I encourage you to give something as it's a sign in our inner self that we're on board and journeying together. So how do we respond to Ruth 2 and God's providence today? Well, it's very practical. We're after the photo that we're going to do as a church family. When, when you leave, you're going to be given a little slip of paper and you'll be able to see on there uh, contact email address for each one of these four things. For Connect, it's going to be pointed you to Martin Hennock if you want to join a house group or prayer trip or sign up to Ashburnham Place. If you want to serve, then contact me to see what areas we could, we could develop and serve in. If you, you're willing to commit to praying for the church and join us, then contact the office who will be able to add you to the church prayer email. And if you want to give, then speak to Mike, um, email him to set up or review your giving. Take that little slip away from you. And for your benefit in belonging, pray, think, and then complete the form. The, then email the, per, the people linked to that response for you to act on it. And if you want to, as a statement of your commitment, you know, tick the box find the one that you're focusing in on and then bring it next week and bring it to the offering to offer that commitment to God so to close may we not leave people alone and may we not separate ourselves from our church fellowship lest we become vulnerable and lose our way we need each other especially this year as we journey through it without a vicar and we want every member to have the joy of belonging here at St Mark's. Shall we pray? <clears throat> Father, thank you that you gave birth to your church for our benefit, to be one in community and to belong together in faith and commitment to you. Lord, show us what is the area you want us to focus in on? What is the area you want me to work on so that I might become and we might become a deeper place of belonging in this community of yours. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Simon. So what does the future home for Ruth and Boaz? And what further parallels we'll be able to draw between their relationship and our church. Well, the next two weeks will discover that for us. We stand as we affirm our faith in the words on the screen. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God, the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, time of prayer. Let us pray. A prayer for our troubled world. Loving Father, we continue to uphold before you the conflict between Israel and Gaza, which has devastated the lives of so many. Please intervene in this situation in which many harsh words and horrendous acts have been said and done. Change the hearts and minds of those in leadership 
so that their prime priority is seeking a just peace in this area and creating a situation where both Jews and Palestinians can coexist without fear. We also remember the ongoing situation in the Ukraine and pray for a speedy end to this conflict. We remember the friends and family of Alexei Navalny, who died in prison because of his beliefs in freedom and justice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. A prayer for our country. We continue to pray for King Charles as he undergoes his treatment for cancer while still carrying on some of his royal duties. Please restrain him from trying to do too much and protect him from nasty side effects of his treatment and also from any other infections which could interfere with it. Please give wisdom to our political leaders at national and local level as they deal with so many varied and complex challenges. May they be able to put aside political point scoring and seek for just and fair solutions to the issues involved. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayer. Now a prayer for our parish. Please give strength and wisdom to Simon, the church wardens and all leaders in our church as they take on additional responsibilities during the interregnum. Help each of us to be aware of ways we can help, especially in offering pastoral support and care to our neighbours, some of whom may be going through challenging times at the moment. For one parishioner, Deidre, today will be especially hard as she faces the first anniversary of her husband's funeral. As she mourns his loss, may she also be comforted as she recalls the happy times they spent together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. A prayer for our lovely world. Father, we thank you for the many signs of new life we see around us at the moment, as spring flowers burst into bloom and some of the trees now have blossom. Thank you for the pleasure we get from enjoying your creation. Help each of us to do all we can to preserve what we are now enjoying for future generations. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayer. And now in this season of Lent, a prayer for ourselves. Lord Jesus, you fasted for 40 days and allowed yourself to be tempted. Lord, in our weakness, protect us from being led astray by seemingly attractive solutions. You reminded us that we do not live by bread alone, so please nourish our souls with the heavenly food of your word. Help each of us to use this season of Lent to deepen our relationship with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now shall we say the final prayer together. Lord of the Church, hear our prayer and make us one in heart and mind to serve you with joy forever. Amen. If you're able, should we stand for the peace? The Lord keeps in perfect peace those who trust in him. In returning and rest you shall be saved. In quietness and trust shall be your strength. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's offer one another a sign of peace.
Our hymn from ashes to the living font. these gifts as we pray. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. Amen. The Lord is here. His Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Please be seated. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you, with saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the blood body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, bread, he praised you. He broke the bread and gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you and gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. 
So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Saviour of the world. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through God, through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Being made one by the power of the Spirit, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. If you would like to receive gluten-free wafers or non-alcoholic wine, then please let us know and we can make that available. We'll be receiving people up the middle aisles and then if you can return by the side aisles back to your seat, that would be wonderful.
Let's pray. Almighty God, you see that we have no we have no power of ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body, and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we say together, Lord Jesus Christ, you humbled us in taking the form of servant, and in obedience died on the cross for our salvation. Give us the courage to follow you and to proclaim you as Lord and King, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Now the moment you've all been waiting for. Um, please read as written, don't go through the events on the screen. Oh, that's for me. Um, please read the slide on the screen. Details of what's coming up this week. There are full details of all events in the newsletter and on the website. And note that some events require you to sign up. Usual place on the board at the back. Uh, this bit's underlined, so we have to do this. Uh, do stay on after tea and coffee and chat for our church photograph, which will take place at about 10 o'clock this morning. This is an all-in church photograph for the church profile, uh, destined to entice our next minister to want to join us. Uh, so everybody smile. Um, as men uh, mentioned uh, in Simon's sermon, there's a welcome evening next month. If you've been coming to St. Mark's for the next 18 months and you need to know more about everything you wanted to know but were afraid to ask, that's on Tuesday, the 12th of March, in the evening. Um, come and see uh, what goes on. Simon and some of the ministry leaders will be there to answer your questions, awkward or simple. And again, please sign up at the back because it would be helpful to have an idea of numbers. More information in the newsletter. Gosh, the APCM to come round again, Linda. 14th of April. Hello. Um, yes, Linda's anxious now for any reports on various missionary things. Uh, but do come along to the APCM, which will be uh, presumably after the, service, the 10.30 service on the 14th of April. If you're new here and you haven't signed up to the uh, lecturer role, please do. It's another way of belonging. It shows that you belong to this church. And also it will show to whoever uh, wants to come and minister us how many people actually want to belong to the church as such. And the other thing is that if you want to vote at the AGM, uh, you can't vote unless you are on the electoral roll. So in that case, please join the electoral roll. Um, there are forms at the back. There are forms online. Please complete them and place them in the box at the back or leave them with the office. And if you've got any questions, speak to any of the wardens or to Rod, who is our officer. Well done, Rod. Um, it isn't, I'm, isn't on the notice, but am I to mention the cards, Joe? Right. Um, it is time to deliver the Alpha and Greek Easter cards, all on one card this year. They're on the um, table at the back. The good news is that the Prayer for Streets team are doing all the long, tedious, boring roads. So that's an incentive to take some of the shorter ones on the table at the back. Please take them and deliver them. And that is the end of the news. <laughs> Our closing Lenten hymn is Take Up Thy Cross, Our Saviour Sin. <laughs>
Thank you for joining us this morning. Please do stick around for the church photo, um, but otherwise have a great rest of the day. Uh, it leaves me to, for, to deliver our final blessing. May Christ give you grace to glow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Thank you.